Today's lecture is on return on investment analysis, oftentimes called ROI analysis. What is ROI analysis? Basically, it is the justification, the written justification, that an organization uh, composes and presents to the CFO of the company uh, so that the CFO can make an informed decision about whether or not um, money should be spent on this proposed business investment. The ROI analysis um, is uh, compiled in such a way that it allows projects from various different departments around the company uh, to be viewed on a fairly equal playing field, financially speaking, uh, so that the CFO can make the best decisions um, on behalf of the company about which projects to invest in. It is a list of tangible and intangible benefits that will accrue to the company because of making the investment in the proposed, in our case, IT business system. When we say tangible, we mean benefits that can be measured financially and there's not a lot of debate about what that particular financial benefit is going to be. For example, if we know that we put a new IT system in and that allows us to uh, reduce our headcount in an operation by, say, three people, and each of those people, the CFO tells us, costs the company $100,000 a year, and the expected lifetime of the system is five years, then the financial benefit of laying off those three people is three times 100,000 times five years, which would be one and a half million dollars. That becomes a tangible financial benefit of the system. There aren't a lot of people that are going to argue with the math. An intangible benefit is a benefit that people recognize will be a benefit to the company, but it's not always obvious what the financial um, quantification of that benefit is going to be. For instance, if we put in a new uh, customer service system, a new CRM system, let's say, um, we can get agreement broadly throughout uh, the company that this is going to increase customer satisfaction, which will result in increased sales but that's about as far as the agreement goes. Um, after that, trying to put a quantity on how much increased sales is going to happen can um, cause considerable debate. The more optimistic um, elements of management um, may be estimating a dramatic increase in sales, whereas the more conservative elements of management um, might be more in favor of a much smaller estimate in how much sales will be increased because of increased customer satisfaction. Um, and because that gets into trying to predict things into the future that are very hard to control and therefore predict, um, it's a risky assessment. And risky assessments are uh, termed intangibles. The other type of intangible that we have listed on the slide are when uh, the financial benefit is not actually a matter of concern. Perhaps a new law has been passed that requires, if you're going to stay in business, that you must do something. Um, an example of that would be Sarbanes-Oxley. Uh, if you're a publicly traded company and you're going to stay in business, then you must implement um, the Sarbanes-Oxley controls. Um, and, and so there's not a lot of debate about whether or not we're going to do that. We just do it. It's a cost of business decision. So the ROI analysis is a requirement in most of corporate America. It provides the business justification to make the investment in a new IT project. It's a required skill of an IT executive. 
And it's a cultivated skill by anybody who wants to someday become an IT executive. And ROI analysis is often a non-trivial task. Um, the reason it's non-trivial is uh, usually has to do with trying to put dollar quantification on the intangible parts of the benefits. Now, ROI requires working with the CFO. Okay, basically, the ROI analysis is being done for the CFO. The CFO is the, is the customer, if you will, or the consumer of the ROI analysis. Um, it is the analysis, as we said before, that the CFO needs to be able to make an informed decision, a rational decision, a financially uh, sound decision about whether or not the company should invest in this proposed project. ROI requires working with the business units to identify and quantify the value they anticipate uh, from the IT system. Um, so it's not exclusively uh, going to be done by the IT department in an IT department vacuum. Uh, in order for an ROI analysis to be done properly uh, for at least large systems, you've got to involve uh, the end users or their senior management as well as the CFO and oftentimes other key players in the company uh, in um, developing that ROI analysis. ROI requires the application of tried and true methodologies for determining uh, the numbers that are going to go into the analysis and how that's going to be presented. Um, most large corporations have standard methodologies for how they do ROI. We are going to do uh, an ROI analysis just as a homework exercise and, and as part of the lecture here in this uh, two lecture series on return on investment that's uh, I've had some students in the past call it ROI on training wheels. Uh, it is, um, um, it's an example of how an ROI analysis might go together so that we can get a sense for what all the different pieces of the ROI analysis are. This is not intended to be the best way to do an ROI analysis. As I said, your particular corporation will have its own tried and true standard methodologies for doing ROI analysis and of course you have to uh, abide by those methodologies and follow uh, the prescribed procedures in your company for that. So we're going to talk about this from a theoretical standpoint in that this becomes a way to do ROI analysis and it's just uh, an exercise that we do here in this class so that we can discuss uh, the various pieces of what goes into an ROI analysis. Now, interestingly enough, ROI, a good ROI analysis requires measurements both before project approval and after project implementation. Okay, so let's stop and consider this for a moment. It's pretty evident why we would want to do um, measurements before project approval. Um, we want to do measurements to help justify uh, whatever the financial benefits are uh, that we're anticipating from the project. And that's going to go into um, a statement on projected return on investment. So again, the CFO will have some sense for how good a business investment uh, this is supposed to be. So then we ask the question, why would we do measurements after the project gets implemented and how is that going to be part of an ROI study? Um, well these after deployment uh, measurements oftentimes are called post-project audits. Um, and why do we want to do a post-project audit? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, we thought we were going to get a certain financial benefit from the project. We want to measure and find out, did we? If we did get that financial benefit, or even better than the, than the estimate was in the ROI analysis, then IT looks like a hero in the rest of the company's eyes. You ought to know that. You ought to 